It's time for Work Comp Talk, coming to you from the Pacific Worker Studio in Concord, California. It's Work Comp Talk. Interesting people talking about the issues that affect the lives of the everyday people that keep our communities moving. Sponsored by Pacific Workers Compensation Law Center, the lawyers for injured workers. With offices in Concord and Oakland, Pacific Workers is the leader in California workers' compensation, representing injured workers throughout Northern California. PacificWorkers.com, the lawyers for injured workers. Now to your hosts, Eric and Carmen. This is Eric Farber, and I've got Carmen Ramirez. Hi. I co-host and the producer of Work Comp Talk, and uh, we have a very special guest today, which is Hazel Ortega. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Hazel is very unique to our world of workers' comp, and she's been in the world of workers' comp for quite a long time, but she didn't start out that way. She actually started out as an injured worker and then going through the process, and uh, Hazel will get, get, get time to completely um, correct all the things I'm about to screw up, but uh, uh, she went through the process and really had a hard time of it and um, decided to make a career out of helping people. She has a wonderful book called Bounce Checks to Private Jets, which I highly recommend, and owns Ortega Counseling which is the leading voucher and educational company in California with, I want to say 30 offices, but that might be wrong. Am I overstating that? Uh, 26. 26. So, and uh, I know at Pacific Workers, um, we have been using, uh, using Ortega for a long time and we just love working with you. And welcome to our podcast. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. We, so we, what we did is that we strategically opened 26 offices wherever there was a workers compensation appeals board in California so that it would be easy for the injured worker to find us. That's great. But you guys, uh, and let's talk first before we get started on anything else about the supplemental voucher, what that actually means um, to somebody in the old days, people used to go to college, people would get paid, uh, you know, they, they, would, they would be much more significant. I remember meeting somebody who said that they actually got their college degree because of workers' comp, and it was a two-year or four-year college degree. It doesn't work that way anymore, does it? No, not at all. Um, there used to be, back in the 90s, unlimited funds to go to school. So you could become a psychologist, a doctor, a lawyer, under the old rules and then it changed and they capped it at 16,000 and then it changed again in 2004 and now they um, have it at $6,000. Well, let me take it back. I know that you got injured at work, Hazel. I know that you've been through the system. You understood everything that happens after the fact that you get injured. If I'm not mistaken, you got injured, you got carpal tunnel syndrome, you got all sorts of things that didn't allow you to actually get back into the same job field you were doing. What prompted you to actually want to dive deeper into this aspect of workers' compensation benefits? I mean, there's tons of benefits out there, but this is to you probably the most important one. What what got you into, into this field? Well, a lot of injured workers don't even know what their benefits are, and that's why they come to attorneys and they ask for help. And a lot of them, even more injured workers, don't have attorneys, so they don't know all of their benefits. I happened to work at a workers' compensation law firm when I was injured, so I did know what was available. And I helped clients through their vocational rehab process on the legal side. And we refer them to vocational counselors and we walk them through it, demystifying the process for them. So when it happened to me, the doctors told me that I couldn't do my job anymore. And um, I was sitting at a desk for somebody who was a lot shorter than me. Uh, at the time I was injured, I was 5'10". I'm not that tall anymore. But <laughs> uh, I did develop carpal tunnel and uh, cubital tunnel, which are problems in my elbow and then problems in my neck. And as a very busy workers' compensation secretary, I couldn't do that job anymore. I had over 400 cases assigned to me. Wow. So 
I thought that I was going to stay at that job for the rest of my life. That was the vision that I had for myself. And in an instant, when the doctor told me I couldn't do my job anymore, my vision changed from that small vision of being a secretary for the rest of my life to one of fear and doom. And then quickly after that, um, because I work at a workers' compensation law firm, the, the workers' compensation doctor told me, go, you, you need to go back to school. At the time, I was 26 years old. I was married and I had three kids and I didn't even have a high school diploma. And so, and I didn't want to go to school. I was not interested in that. And that was not part of my plan. And it was completely devastating. I did go back to work. I showed my, limit, my, my work restrictions to my boss. And uh, he was very kind to um, change my work duties and allow me to stay for some time, not, not forever, but just some time to get me through school. And that was the agreement. And I, I went back to school. I got my high school diploma when I was 30. And then I got my associate's degree two years later. And then eventually I became an educational psychologist. That was something that was not in, in my future before the injury. That was not anything that I was thinking about. And if you would have told me that that was going to happen, I would have called BS on it because there was no piece of me that wanted to go to school. I didn't have the confidence uh, needed for that. And so I couldn't even fathom it. I, I would be offended if you would tell me to go back to school. Like, no, there's no way I can do something like that. But I, because, I, have, to ask, I have to ask you something. So you're 26, you're going through this stuff, you got three kids, you sign up for um, some sort of self-help program, right? And you, you go to, you go there to, to, to and I, I, I got to ask you, I mean, it sounds like a Tony Robbins program. It sounds like something, it really is something that's talking about limiting beliefs, right? the story you tell yourself. Yeah. And, um, and who was it? Who put on that program? It's in your well, book. Right? Yeah, it's in my book. I did, I did go to a personal development seminar. It's the number one in the world. It's called Landmark Education. Oh, sure. It's Landmark. Yeah. And so I highly recommend that to everyone. I sponsored all my employees to go. And my family has attended over 50 members of my family and closest friends have done it and it has changed all our lives. Um, but prior to, I didn't do landmark until I was 36 years old. So I already had become an educational psychologist, but I still had my old, my old patterns of arguing with my family and having a lot of drama in my life. I, I grew up in a really poor neighborhood of downtown Los Angeles where there were drive-by shootings every day. My best friend was stabbed when I was 12 years old. My cousin was killed in a drive-by shooting. My other cousin was killed by the police in a, in a case of mistaken identity. I mean, we had a lot of trauma. And then also part of my story is that my mom shot and killed her boyfriend in a domestic violence dispute. Wow. And I had to raise her two kids. Um, when she had that incident with the domestic violence, she was pregnant. And then she became a fugitive for five years before going to prison. So I... This is your mother. What's that? Who, this is your mother? My mother. Wow. Yeah, I was 21 years old when that happened. And five years later, she went to prison. And then those two little boys that she fled with came to live with me so I personally had one daughter and then the two boys came to live with me so then I had three kids all of a sudden yeah and so you um you know when you come from a, a traumatic background like that you you really don't think you're worthy of much you're I remember thinking that I was you know really lucky to survive my neighborhood to to not be on welfare to not be in gangs and not to have you know, it's just a bunch of kids uh, with no fathers and, uh, and, and or a drug addict. And so I already felt like I was ahead of the game compared to like nobody else was doing better than I was. And yeah. so my life was very limited in that way. And I didn't have people that were educated around me. And so what I see a lot with injured workers, number one, they don't know that this benefit exists. They don't know there. And then they say no without even knowing how it works because they are ready, they can't see themselves doing anything else. So our primary job as counselors for these injured workers, when you refer your client to us, 
we have to demystify everything to them. We have to explain the rules of the voucher, the, you know, the regulations and how it works and how it can work for them in their specific situations. So we create possibility for them where they can see it for themselves. Well, so. I will tell you, I've always been amazed at the things that, that people have gone through our clients at Pacific Workers have gone through your program and what they've come out. I mean, bakers, somebody's a golf instructor, like, no, there's no company out there doing this type of stuff. How many schools do you deal with? Well, How many programs? the injured worker can choose from schools that are on the state accredited list. That's the only um, schools that the insurance company will approve and pay for. And there's 13,000 different schools and programs. So we have access to thousands of schools and programs. Um, the most common training programs right now for injured workers are online, online classes. And uh, Eric, I don't know if you know, but the voucher, the primary function of a voucher, which is a coupon, right? It's a piece of paper that comes to the sure, injured worker. Absolutely. After yeah, after the employer doesn't offer a job. Right. And you can be disabled from 1% to 99%, and you would get a voucher. Even 0.5%, actually. I saw a person, 0.5% PD, yeah. get a voucher. So these vouchers come in a form of a, a coupon, and you present it to the school, and that's the proof that, you, that the insurance company will pay for your training. And, yeah, so our, right now, online classes are the most – common and most popular, especially with COVID-19, those are, that's the future and people are really catching up to that. So let me ask you, are they also entitled, let's say somebody has a voucher, but they don't have a computer. Are they entitled to that as well? So the voucher has a total value of $6,000. From there, an injured worker can access a $500 check for miscellaneous funds. Anything that you need, um, primarily that would be like for buying paper and pencils and being prepared as a student. Uh, but you, p people have used it to pay for babysitting, for mileage, for clothes, for paying their bills, whatever you need. Immediately, as soon as you get a voucher, you can ask for the $500 and you get up to $1,000 of reimbursable funds for tools now, related. Is that part of the 6000 or is that on top of it? No, it's part of the six thousand. So you get a six thousand dollar voucher. You request your five hundred dollar check. Then you have five thousand five hundred left. Mm -hmm. Then you ask for uh, tools, and the tools need to be related to the course that you're taking. So we have clients that um, very popular courses are cosmetology. So they get a cosmetology kit. They get up to a thousand dollars in cosmetology kit, and if they're taking. Any, any online course, any on-campus course, a computer is pretty much a, uh, one of the tools that, that goes with any class that you're taking. You need a computer. So if you want a computer, then you, get a com you go and you buy a computer and you get a receipt and submit it. And the insurance company has 45 days to reimburse you. That's great. What is the biggest challenge that you have? Because clearly, as an educational psychologist, as somebody who's gone through these personal development programs. I mean, I think that, uh, and I have, and we've sent our employees, we, cho we, we chose the Robin stuff. Um, and, uh, and, but it, a lot of this is just so much the same. And the first thing it always starts with is limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Well, yeah, well, um, what I say about that are, you know, that's mindset, right? And mindset is how the world occurs to you. And the, the, how the world occurs to you are your beliefs. So before you take any action, you're taking action based on your beliefs. And like for myself, my belief was that I wasn't smart enough and that I wasn't the kind of person that stuck to things and I dropped out. I didn't finish high school. Why would I finish college? Like, why would I even start when I know I'm not going to finish? Um, like, that was the, that's how I knew myself to be. And what I ended up doing in my recommendations for injured workers is take, a, take this the first step, have a conversation. Find out what is available. Get all the information because a lot of times we make decisions based on the information that we have and we don't have all the information. So get all the information on how these vouchers work for an injured worker. And then after that, create a vision for yourself that you're going to 
um, get a certificate. You're going to get a bookkeeping certificate, or you're going to get a secretarial certificate, or you're just going to learn how to use computers and create the vision of like, what is that going to look like when you're done? Not the process of it, because you know, injured workers invent a lot of things. Like they even think I'm too old. Um, I'm too injured and I'm going to be going to school with a bunch of young people. But in reality, these, these vouchers are geared for vocational programs, which means you're not going to be on a college campus. You'll be on a vocational school campus, which are more adults. And uh, if you're going to do online classes, then you're doing them from home. So anything that you're inventing, really, it's, you never know if that's the truth. You have to get a thorough uh, consultation. So getting all the information, registering yourself, giving it a, a try, that's another thing. And then creating a winning environment, right? Like for myself, um, at 26 years old with three kids at home, I didn't think that I could go to school because where would I study? Where would I have the time? I wouldn't be able to do that. And then when I did register, I, I actually found, um, I asked my boss if I could study at work and he let me use his office. And so just take the first step of creating the vision and taking the action of, of registering and then creating a winning environment. After that, it's celebrating your wins, right? So don't celebrate that you got your certificate. Just celebrate that you started your class on the first day. And then yeah. celebrate when you got your first quiz and you got it. When, when you read the first chapter, right? Yes. The book, when you completed the first class, whatever it is, those small wins are so important, you know? And, yeah. And, and, and something else that you said, right? It's creating the environment. And to me, we are the sum of the five people we speak to the most. Yeah. So winning environment is also the people that you're dealing with. And sometimes some of the people that are the ones that are most detrimental to you are your family. And nobody's saying get rid of your family, but put in those other people into your life, uh, like a circle of friends. So even for myself, every time I'm up to something, I'll start a group chat. And like, if I'm losing weight, I have a chat for losing weight and uh, we check in every day and uh, we, we, we put in how much we weigh. So uh, for injured workers, they can find people in their lives that have degrees, that have certificates, that have some technical knowledge and have been to school and then ask for support. They're there and people want to see you succeed. Right. You Absolutely. Have- I mean, one of the things is that, that you talked about was your boss. Like just by going and asking your boss, so many people wouldn't even do that, right? They wouldn't ask their boss for stuff. And like Carmen and I work together every day, right? We have a third person on our team um, and we work together every day. We talk to, you know, uh, we talk to each other every morning and then every afternoon. And one of the things I try to remind them, even though I'm the founder of the company, is I say, I'm your coworker, not your boss. Right? Yeah. Because, and part of that simply is, is so they know that we're there to support each other. So you already had one person in your circle that was there to support you rather than sort of the people who might put you down and say, oh, you'll never do that. And my guess is, is that the five people you talk to most now are completely different than they were then. Yeah, for sure. Now I'm an entrepreneur, right? So what I, what after graduating and becoming a psychologist, I, I started my first office from my home and, um, and it was inside my living room and then I moved into the garage and yep. the way I was able to grow my business is by asking for help. So I got somebody to donate to computers. Somebody else helped me convert my garage into an office and put drywall up <laughs> uh, and, the, and the folders and stationery. That's something else somebody else gave us. So it really didn't cost me anything to start my business. Yeah. There's always <laughs> people who want to see people succeed. And if they don't want to see you succeed, say goodbye to them. And I understand, you know, the family stuff and the family dynamic is a tough one. Um, and it doesn't really matter what your background, you're always going to, you know, find this kind of stuff. And it's sort of, you have to keep them at bay a little bit, right? And you, you play nice. And, and uh, you know, um, highly recommend the personal development stuff, especially when you're going through these different events and life changes. As, as lawyers and dealing with injured workers, and as you know, my, my practice was dealing with athletes and entertainers, you know, all, and, and a very, very different level, different type of client for many years. And then getting into the workers' comp for the pro athletes and then workers' comp for our community members, 
and um, which I really enjoy more than anything I've ever done. And part part of that is is you know really helping these people through, and and then at the end of them we 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 turn them over to to somebody like you, um, and we don't really use anybody else in this because. I've, I've just been so impressed with the stories we hear back on what our clients are able to do with the vouchers when they get them. Not everybody gets them, but when, when they do get them. And um, I just, you know, I love the stories of like the guy, you know, became a golf instructor, right? And I don't know what he was doing before, but completely different world. This allows that transformation. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> Go ahead. Hazel. When I called him, he didn't want to use the voucher. He's a, he told me he was a retired police officer and he had a pension and he was doing really well. And all he wanted to do was golf all day. And so he had $10,000 towards his training because that was the amount uh, from 2004 to 2012. Those people with those dates of injury are, can get up to $10,000 based on their level of permanent disability. And so he told me he didn't want to use it, which, and it took me a long time to get a hold of him. Finally, he heard the information and I told him, well, you can, t- you can um, use this to improve your game. You can take a uh, golf instructor lessons and get uh, tools and your tools are related to your training, which are golf clubs. Yeah, so all of a sudden went out and bought the most golf expensive clubs. clubs ever. Yes. So he got like $2,000 worth because he has the old voucher. So there's a higher budget for that. Of of uh, golf clubs and he actually did become a golf instructor. Yeah, so that's, that's awesome. what I'm saying about getting the information. Yeah. But you know, I we're think really what happens, a, sorry, sorry. Oh, I think that's what happens. A lot of the time people don't get the information. They already have the fear of change. No one likes change. It always comes with fear. So I think what you have built within Ortega Counseling is not only giving you the right tools or the right information needed to continue a better life after you've been injured, but you guys also work with the mental part, with getting to know the real you, who you are, what you're capable of, and putting that vision. I can pretty much say maybe a lot of other companies that offer the same type of service but will help you with your voucher, don't put that perfect piece of mindset into that injured worker to actually be successful at the end. So that's amazing that you guys are able to create that. And it's because you went through it yourself. So, I mean, congratulations. It's, it's amazing. And so much of what we've seen, boy, there's just so many charlatans in, in the business and workers comp, and it's just awful. You know, the ones where you show up for a day, they take your $6,000, they hand you a $300 computer teach you how to use it for a day and send you home. I mean, that's just awful, awful stuff. I hate seeing that. And I love seeing that there's so many different classes that people can take. There's so many different things that people can do. I mean, this is life-changing stuff. And when you're, you know, in workers' comp, and we talk about this a lot, we talk about this with our people a lot, you know, the top 10 stressors in life um, include things like losing a spouse, going through a divorce, losing a child, losing a job, getting injured, and going through a lawsuit. Well, in a worker's comp firm, we're dealing with three of the world of, of life's top 10 stressors at the same time. And yeah. so to be able to come through that, you know, we work hard for our clients and get that, you know, to get a resolution. And then that they can really make that transition. Like that's our, you know, our one of our we have lots of mottos in our firm, but the very first one we came up with was changing lives one client at a time and really kind of coming through that, you know, that, that, that cathartic moment, like where the bad stuff gets behind you and the good stuff is in front of you. You know, that's the, you know, you get to, you get to work with the good stuff, right? Yeah, I know. I'm, re- I'm really lucky. I get them when they're in possibility. Yeah. Right. And so it's, I, I uh, think that you know, it behooves attorneys to refer the clients to vocational counselors to get them thinking about something other than their case, right? Yeah. Because by the time they're eligible for the voucher, the doctor already released them from treatment. Yeah. And now they're just sitting there waiting for their case to settle and thinking about you all day long. So yeah. get yeah, them to think much. about something else. Yeah, get them to you know, move forward with their lives. That'd be the best thing that you can do for them. 
On top of that, as you know, if somebody did lose their job and they were injured after 2013, they also get a, a return to work supplement fund check for five thousand right. dollars. And so that check is not for training. What that check is is a wage loss benefit, right? Because there was a study that showed that when an injured worker changes jobs after an injury, they don't make more money at the next job. They actually tend to make less money. Yeah. So they came up with this fund and um, with a formula and they came with, up with a $5,000 check to help every injured worker who has a job loss. And that money can be used to, what I've seen people do is like fix their cars or buy a car or get caught up with their bills from home, their mortgage, mm -hmm. you know, um, pay for some of their doctor bills, some, of, some things that they're trying on their own that are not under workers' comp. They can do anything that they want with that $5,000 and it's not taxable and it doesn't impact their social security benefits because it's not earned income. So yeah. this is a really important point to make. And these benefits also, they expire. So a lot of injured workers ignore um, these benefits until their case closes. And that's not the best uh, tip to do, right? Because they expire. And so by the time they're calling us and they want us to help them, well, their $5,000 check is no longer available. And their vouchers are about to expire. So it's really important for attorneys also to let their clients know that there are deadlines on these benefits. Yes, very much so. So I want to talk about some of the other stuff because this is just, it's such a great story. And again, we're we'll talking with Mabel Ortega, who's the founder of Ortega Counseling, but also the author of the book, Bounced Checks to Private Checks. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> like it's right there. Oh, look at that. Um, and not only did you start Ortega, but you and I have talked before, like you own restaurants, you own buildings, real estate. It's great stuff. Talk about how some of that stuff happened. Well, um, what I write about, you know, I wrote the book from bounce checks to private jets for my clients, for injured workers, because that's how... I, that's what happened to me that changed my life, right? I had an injury and I couldn't do my job anymore. I wouldn't have the life that I have now if it wasn't for that injury. So uh, what I wrote about in the book is that my mindset was very small. My vision was small, like get a job and stay there for the rest of your life. And then it changed. And so I was in a mindset of survival. And then it, it, it evolved into making, uh, bettering myself, right? Betterment. And then when I saw that I was actually having small successes, like I got my associate's degree and if I could do that, well, maybe, you know, just one and a half years more and I can get a bachelor's degree. All right. And then, well, you know, if I can do that, then I can get a master's. So it was evolving. So we have these um, expectations that we're not going to make it. And um, if we do celebrate those small things, our vision will grow and it evolves into a bigger vision. Just keep one step you know, one step at a time. So now I went from survival to betterment to thriving and to where I'm at right now is mastery of miracles. And so I believe in myself. My mindset is that I'm a winner and that whatever I step my mind to, I'm going to be successful. And I have been approached by a lot of people about starting businesses and I've said no probably to 99% of them. Mm -hmm. And some of them I have said, yes, the ones that feel easy, light, and that they're, they're the right fit for me. Businesses that improve the quality of people's lives. Like, that's what I want to be involved in. And right now, um, yes, I have, like, one of the top best restaurants in Los Angeles. And I have also a... Go ahead, plug it. What's it called? What's, What's it called? called? <laughs> <laughs> it's called the Nixon Chops and Whiskey. Yeah. Wow. So uh, we're in Whittier. Our main office is in Whittier, which is where Richard Nixon... Uh, was born and raised. And, and so our town is Nixon town. So we name a lot of things after him. And then I also have a sock company called Savvy Socks, S-A-V-V-Y-S-O-X. And they're trendy socks. And we have celebrities wearing our socks like Cardi B and DJ Khalid and a lot of other people wear our socks. And um, of course, the counseling center, though, that's where my passion is. And uh, I, my, most of my attention and energy goes there because education changed my life. And that is, for me, I think, how we can end suffering in the world is through education. 
and not necessarily like you have to get a degree, but, you know, like go to personal development seminars, read books, learn from other people, be on the lookout. There's so many things that we can do to learn. There's a book about everything. I am There's in- a lot of them about everything. Yes. And so if you have a naughty nine-year-old, there's a book for naughty nine-year-olds. You could pick up a book and find out how to deal with your nine-year-old. Yeah. Yeah. Education for me so, is where my You probably read a lot. Definitely. Right. Give me uh, two of your favorite books that you recommend to people. Well, of course, mine. Yeah, I love the four agreements. Oh, that's great. I actually just read it. Oh, my gosh. I love that one. And um, they're just basic rules to get along in life. Yep. If you only read that book, you'd be way ahead of the game. And then uh, he has actually a, a, a subsequent book called The Mastery of Love. And that one I really I recommend um, for anybody as well. And um, personal development. So right now I'm reading uh, Deepak Chopra books. And I'm, getting, I'm in meditation. And, um, I'm also, you asked me earlier, like, do I have mentors now if I still keep on having mentors and my winning environment now is I do associate with other entrepreneurs and other people that have bigger businesses in mind and I get to learn from them. And that, that is probably the, the secret to my success is having mentors and having these circles of influence that are positive. A circle of influence is a great way to put it. I'm a big fan of Tim Ferriss, and he always says you're the sum of the five people you hang around. Yeah. Right? It's, it's great stuff. And um, do you have a personal motto? Uh, what, work on yourself every day, every day. And I love Tim Ferriss. You know, I read his book, The 4-Hour Work Week. Yes. And uh, when I read his book, I probably was four years into my business, mm-hmm. and I went from working – 60 hours a week to 25. <laughs> oh, 25. Right now I'm working 80. <laughs> yeah. Well, the funny thing about Tim Ferriss's uh, the four hour work week is I say, this is great, but I guarantee Tim Ferriss does not work four hours. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's four hours here and then four hours in the other business. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, exactly right. Yeah. yeah. But he does th- that book actually also uh, shows you how to create your goals. So, you know, you never dream big because you think, oh, I can, you know, it's kind of like how do you eat an elephant? You eat it one bite at a time. So he uh, talks about goals like, you know, we never dream big, like have a mansion because we think we can't afford it. It's a, let's just say a million dollar plus mansion. We never say we want that because we don't have a million dollars. But if you take out a mortgage, you don't pay a million dollars a month. You pay a mortgage and the mortgage is, is like, oh, well, OK, that's maybe I could do that. Yeah. We just think about the big one, the big thing, and that's what overwhelms us. So that's the biggest thing I got out of his book. Yep. The, uh, the, the, it's just steps, right? So listen, this has been fantastic. We'd love to have you come back um, and talk to us some more. You know, it's time to have you come back and talk to, to, to the people in our firm too. And um, I know that uh, Carmen and you are going to jump on and, and do some work on uh with, sorry, my lights go out if I don't move around very much. So um, uh, now I'm back into dark. Hold on, every, there we go. It just so, doesn't uh, think big enough. The room yeah, doesn't capture. I'm not, yes, it's, <laughs> a, it, it's kind of a big, you know, it's a big space out here. There's nobody out here. I'm going to ask you one more question. How has vouchers changed in the world of COVID? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. So, well, now more than ever, injured workers have to, um, uh, uh, fix their skills, right? Like upgrade their skill set because now they're going to be competing with millions of people that are out of a job. So it's like you really don't have a choice right now. You need to sharpen up your skills. If you think you already know computers, get another level of computers yeah. skills going. Also, people that are entitled to this benefit are people who lose their jobs, right? But there are a lot of people that actually go back to their job. And if the job, the job has to last at least 12 months, if it doesn't, then you're entitled to a voucher for 6,000 plus a $5,000 check because you lost your job. So now that COVID-19 happened, all those people that actually returned to work are no longer working right now. So they in two months could qualify for the voucher and the $5,000. 
So that's something to uh, keep an eye out for because they're probably not going to go back to those jobs, especially if they're restaurants and retail, they're not going to be going. Yeah. Well, as I keep saying, and let's hope, you know, we have a public health crisis. When our public health crisis is solved, our economic crisis will be solved. It may take some time, right? I'm trying to study as much as I can from reputable sources about this, um, just literally as much as I possibly can, um, because it's helpful to our community. And, um, you know, we, uh, we don't have much more time, we, you know, uh, here, because I know you guys are going to jump over and talk on Tulucha as well. Um, it's been di it's different because we're recording this for Facebook to get it on there. Um, and so our recording is a little bit different today. I want to thank you so much. Carmen's going to take us out, out of here. Um, we're going to have your information on our work comp talk page, uh, some of this other information and then, um, and, uh, Carmen do your thing. Yeah. So if anyone is interested in any type of information that was given out throughout the podcast, you can definitely follow everything we talked about in our website, which is workcomptalk.net. Or you can also see the information on social media as well. Hazel, is there any place where someone can get a hold of you, say your website, your phone number, social media? What would be the best place to get a hold of if they have questions or would like more information? You can go to our website. It's uh, OrtegaCounselingCenter.com. We have a lot of free resources there and a lot of information for you. And you can email us right from the website and contact us. And our phone number is 562-789-7532. Perfect. And we're also going to post this, like I said, on social media. So if you didn't have a chance to get a pen, if you're listening to the podcast now, you can always go back or just log on to our Facebook, which is Work Comp Talk Podcast, or anywhere on social media, you'll find us under Work Comp Talk. We're available in all the platforms you'd like to listen to a podcast on, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play. I mean, we're everywhere. And we will also make sure to post a link to buy your book, which is available on Amazon, correct? Yes, and it's in Spanish also. Fantastic. Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. Thank and you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. And I want to do I want to do something special for for the first five people in English and Spanish that contact us. Um, I'm going to buy their uh, your book for them. Oh, nice! Fantastic. Wait, where do I have to contact you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, just important to say the first five messages. People that send us a message via, say, Facebook, uh, yeah. direct message on Facebook through the Work Comp Talk Facebook. The first five people, Eric's buying that book for you. <laughs> how about, how about uh, post it on the comments and then we'll get in touch with you. Definitely. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Definitely. So I think it's a great book. I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed our talk today. And, Very uh, enlightening. Let's have fun on, uh, on Tulucha. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you for helping all these people that you have helped. Tens of thousands. I know that. Yeah. Be proud of that work you're doing. Thank you. I am. Thank you. <laughs>